Good morning and welcome back to another edition of the Lynn Lowdown. I'm Danny Vittori and today we have Pastor Gina Cordy here from the First Church of the Nazarene. In Lynn, yes. In Lynn, yes. I that right. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for coming back on the show. Thank you for having me again. Great. And you said this time you want to talk a lot about some of the other uses for the building, some of the right. additional resources you have. Right. So where would you want uh, where would you want to start with that? Is there any specific place? Or? Sure. I think it's just really knowing that the church is a church, but there are other things that are happening in the community. Like we have a lot of recovery groups meeting there. We have Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. People wouldn't think these things are happening at a church, but they are. I think we got to mention last time a little bit about the food share table that we've been running for. Since COVID began, we got a grant. Um, that continues to operate out of the church, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And when groups come to you, how would they go about like using the space? Like, Is there a way that they sign up or a way they come to you? Or Right. They would contact either myself or Pastor Paul, who's not here today. Um, he didn't need us both to talk about this. So um, they would contact me. Uh, they have the church number. I think you put that up. And we could talk about what their needs are, what they're looking for. There's a cost associated. It's nominal because we want to be a blessing to the community, not a burden. But obviously, you use the building, you're using water, all those things. So there is a nominal cost associated. And really just trying to figure out, would it be a good fit? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? What is it that you want to do? How is it going to be a blessing to the community? Um, and seeing if, if it'll be a good fit or not. But the first step is always a conversation. Yeah, a conversation with the group, seeing what they want, seeing what you right. want, if the interests align. And right. why would you say it's so important to be renting out the space to other groups in the community? Like, why do you think that's important to do? I think that's important because the church, um, a lot of people view the church as something separate. You can't approach a church. This is the church, this is the community, but the, commu the church has been a staple of the community forever. Um, so really just letting them know that, no, you don't have to come to my church for me to, to support you. The church is, is not a building. We meet in the building. The way we view it is we're the church. We are the church. So the people are the church. The building is where we meet together. We go out into the community. So how can we be a community to the community as a church, if that makes any sense? No, it does. The church should be a community for the community, with the community, because there are things that we can take back from the community also. It's not just us. The community has a lot to give to us. Yeah, you don't want them to be separate. You want them no. to be together, working with each other. Exactly. And there are a lot of things we can be working on right now in the community and the world. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. I definitely <laughs> I would agree with that. And you talked about, sorry, it was the different groups that meet there. That, mm -hmm. Do you have ones that like, consistently meet? Do you have a lot of different groups? How does that usually work? We have consistent recovery groups. Mm -hmm. uh, they meet. We have one group that meets on Tuesday through Friday. I believe it is at 1130. The other recovery groups meet in the evening at 7. That goes on from Wednesday, no, it's actually Tuesday to Saturday also. Okay. Girl Scouts meet on Saturdays at 1. Boy Scouts use the space whenever they want to, but I think it's like Monday, one Monday of the month, they can use it more frequently. But there's still other times that the building could be available if people needed access. We've also been um, allowing the community van from Lynn Community Health Center to come and utilize our parking lot so they could run their mobile van, doing the COVID vaccines, doing health screenings right there on site. So we've been doing that. Again, I said the food share table where people can come if they have a food shortage, they, if they don't have enough food to feed their family, they will leave a message for the church. Um, and then we would put together a bag and either they could pick it up or if they had no way of picking it up. It's not something we always do, but there are certain times when we'll have someone deliver it depending on availability. But that's usually done with agencies. Um, so like the Community Health Center, they'll call me or email me. We have a contact person there. I need 20 bags for um, these families that I'm working with. We'll put them together. They'll have someone from the community health come pick them up. There could be other agencies that do the same thing, and we're we're there and ready and willing to help, and we have the resources to do it. Oh, that's 
I think that's great, though, using the resources, really getting connected with the community. Yeah. And you've mentioned it a little bit mm -hmm. last time a little now, but the f the food share that that started. You, what did you say when it COVID, during COVID? During COVID, right? So that was kind of one of your responses to it. Exactly. That's pretty much the largest response we've had to because we shut down. But <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's been one of our largest response to COVID um, in conjunction with, I think it's United Way who mm -hmm. got the grant and then they, they corralled a lot of other agencies to participate in that within our area. And we were one of the agencies that they reach out to and work with, but there are other agencies involved. Like I said, Lynn Community Health reaches out to us, but it could be any agency in Lynn or um, any family in Lynn. Now that you'll have our phone number, call us if we can be uh, of help. We certainly would be happy to do that. Yes, yes, definitely. And uh, when you say they reach out to you, so is it, do you do a lot of work with the organizations? Is it you? Is it Reverend Paul? Is it like it's Eileen other people? Brown, actually. Okay. We have, uh, I would call her the coordinator of it. She's, right. really, she's really my manager. <laughs> Eileen Brown, she actually heads it up. She has volunteers that actually come out and help her on Tuesday evenings to put together the bags. She's the one that also leads the Girl Scouts. So she really, she, she's been amazing. She does it. She puts the bags together. She works with United Way. The thing that I'm in charge of is making sure that the money doesn't run out and finding the grants um, for us to be able to continue to purchase the food. Mm -hmm. So that's, we're pretty good right now, but at some point it's going to run out. So I got to get on top of that. So if anybody knows of any grants for food for land, let me know. <laughs> yeah. No, you do. You, you all have your important roles to it. You all work together to. Yes create this good system yes yeah she's the coordinator within the grants are also very important of course absolutely it won't work with no food <laughs> no, we'll, we'll be work giving out empty bags <laughs> yeah that's, uh, that, that wouldn't really be very helpful no i'd probably get mobbed oh <laughs> no we don't want that no we definitely don't want that not at all and looking a little bit into the future a bit, what would you hope to use the space for if you were to think about it like something you would love to use the space for or something you would love to happen there? Is there anything that you can think of? Yes, I'm glad you asked me that question because I almost forgot to mention that we are looking to, I think Center Board might be the only one that has it in the city right now, what's called the community fridge, where people, they have food in there and people can go take what they need, people can put food in there. Oh, okay. um, so our church has been in discussion around there, really looking at the liability of it, mm -hmm. but that is one of our goals within the next few months to have a community fridge brought to our location because we own the property, you have to own it, okay. um, and have a community fridge there. Beyond that, when I look forward, one of the things, as we know, churches are changing. People don't necessarily go to church and sit in the pew and listen to a sermon, whatever. I would like to see it become more of a community drop-in center. Maybe people, and this is what the last pastor, um, Pastor Heather Audrey, envisioned for the church, or as a part of her vision, is having people come in if they just want prayer come in and meet with someone, or if they're in crisis, I told you I'm a licensed clinical social worker, just really meeting them in the moment, um, not always on Sundays or a Tuesday night Bible study or prayer, but really just meeting people where they are in that moment and having the doors open, again, not just the prescribed times that churches are usually open, but at other times, because people's lives, people, they're always in motion. Things are always happening. So really being available to them during those times, I would love to see that uh, happen. Yeah. Now, we also have a parsonage, which is a house that the pastor of the church can live in, which oh. is right next door. I don't live there. <laughs> but one of the things I talk with parrot Pastor Jared Spaulding, another pastor um, at the church, interim pastor, he talked about making that a missionary house so that they could stay there and um, do some work in the community also, which I think um, at first I was like, well, wait a minute, maybe I want to move in that house. I'm like, no, I like this idea better. So, yes, making that into a missionary house, I think that would be wonderful. No, those all sound like. They do sound like really great ideas and really expanding into the community, making right. it more accessible for anyone right. who wants to go there. That's right. So you, you said you don't just look at it as like, oh, church is a separate thing that I have to be a certain way to go to. Right. It's been that way too long. 
church has been separate. We've been really insular. I might have said that last time. Where we really just keep to ourselves. How can we have an effective ministry if all we're doing is ministering to one, ourselves and taking care of our own needs? Yeah, we're supposed to do that, but we're supposed to go out. It says, go, go and make disciples, not stay, stay here and make disciples. We're supposed to be disciples, so we need to get out, go out into the community and welcome everybody we come into contact with because it's all about love. It is that those do they sound like such amazing programs such great ways to reach out into the community and i'm glad you're able to come back on so that we could talk about it a little bit more yes. in detail like give some more details on it i'm glad you had me anytime of course thank and thank you for coming on thank again you, Danielle. of course and once again this has been the lynn lowdown i'm danny vittori we will see you next week with more guests <laughs>